Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review. After a very long hiatus, I am back, uh, this time to post some reviews of the Head to Head 9 Contest Parks. So Head to Head 9 is New Elements' premier RCT contest uh, and is also the reason why I've been gone for so long. I've been helping our team uh, build a couple of parks and once we get to the round two reviews we'll be able to talk through them. Uh, if you're not familiar with Head to Head, uh, this is a, a contest that comes up every three years. We are on the ninth iteration at the moment. Uh, this is Head to Head 9. So it's a, as the name implies, a Head to Head contest. There are six different teams uh, going Head to Head through a round robin stage. There are seven matches, or seven rounds of matches, where all the teams will play all the other teams at least once. And the uh, top two teams from each of the two divisions will go to a semifinal and final to determine the winner. Uh, this contest is going to roll on all through the summer. Uh, we are currently on round number three as I record this video, so I'm a little bit behind the eight ball uh, with my reviews here. But like I said, we've been uh, busy at work uh, trying to build some winning parks. But let's, uh, let's take a look at round one. Match one, so this just happens to feature one of my team's parks. This is from Logan's Run. Uh, this is the Good Death. Um, so this park is conceptually around a uh, kind of fantasy world where this you know, long, uh, in the past, giant of some kind has passed away in this natural valley and has kind of left his uh, body to decay down to bones. And all these little villagers and villages have sprung up around it as shrines, as, you know, just pulling different resources and energy from this uh, kind of, I guess, woodland giant spirit thing uh, in the middle of it. Uh, so this is a pretty cool park in general. Uh, I thought it was a pretty neat concept and a nice way to kick off the contest. Well, we've got two roller coasters here. So we have the wooden coaster here first. This is just called the Moss, which I think is a really nice... Uh, kind of pleasing name to it. I like these sort of lush green parks. Um, let's take a look at this. We have these sort of ruins here, sort of um, almost Celtic-ish. I love the hand coming up here with the ring around it. Um, as we come through here, the um, the the real star, of course, is the the giant itself. I think, and I love the way the river kind of runs down through the middle of it. Um, but the coaster works its way through also. It's got this great double helix at the end. Uh, it's often kind of hard to make these helixes look good. I mean, you have to have the straight sections in here, which is not always the best, but I think it turned out pretty well, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, so nice little layout on the side there. Here's our station and the queue that kind of works its way around here. I love the bits of foliage on the roof and uh, just sort of this naturalistic approach to things uh, so you've got your greens but the the red roofs really offset that from a color textural standpoint i think it works really well now on the other side we have the second coaster here so uh this little guy is uh, the will of the wisp and it's a nice little launch coaster um it's kind of wraps around our village here uh, we've got this queue line that goes around the sunflower fields i could use of that object um, and then you know, down here we've got the little sheep ride, the herd, uh, kind of a little trope we've seen a couple of times now. But I do like the look of it and kind of set up across all the different ruins here using these little butterfly objects pretty um, heavily in here. But lots of little gardens and things like that. Um, there's a canoe ride that goes down the middle here. There it is. Um, and then just all sorts of bits and pieces. Here's a, a little vignette, Abel here fixing his boat. Uh, I'm a big fan of this sort of thing where you hide different parts and pieces in your um, in your area, whether it's frozen staff, whether it's frozen rides. It, it does so much more for me than a piece of scenery because it helps tell a story. So there's all sorts of just little things like this. Love this little boat or uh, little horse ride here, the stables, um, using just the operating mode from the top spin. You can get it to rock in place. A fun little trick, just a fun little hack there. Speaking of hacks, we have the uh, teacups ride here in the middle. So this is a little uh, ritual uh, themed here with the uh, pillars and fire and everything up here close to the 
the giant skull, I guess. Um, but nice little use of this this space. I like the pillar in the middle there. And you know, as you go up further, we have these little hobbit holes, a little circular uh, doors in here either side, um, little bird cages up here, and then this cool mechanism here for uh, this elevator also has the staircase up on the side also, which I think is kind of nice. Um, but it's this neat little bit of mechanical um, stuff, I guess, within this sort of older, older style ruinous uh, overall design. But I like the implication here that there's a some kind of machine in the castle here that cables up to the other pieces here that winches the elevator up and down. And speaking of, I just like this ruined, um, ruined area up here. I think it's very nice. Uh, we've got... Uh, Here's a widow mourning in the cemetery. So all sorts of little stuff like this. I always like these sorts of names, whether they're funny, like naming it after other uh, other team members or other teams, or things like this that actually tell the story. I mean, regardless of what it is, I, I just like the overall aesthetic of that. Um, this is a cool kind of shot here with the big drop of the coaster wrapping around through the hand, uh, the skeleton hand there. And then this great viewing spot for the um, uh, the walkway down. I thought that was very nicely done. And just, again, with the coloration, the way that the dark trees kind of offset against the lighter foliage, but then all the greenery as a whole um, has a pretty good color range across, you know, from this lighter, almost whitish um, look down to the darker green. And it just goes very well with the other warmer woods and stones and other sorts of texture so it's a very nicely textured map just <clears throat> it's a good look overall i think uh for the um, the the whole coloration of the map and just texturally and everything like that and and the interaction is super cool so the wooden coaster coming around here going through this helix or i guess probably the helix more so going around the wooden coaster got this little waterfall behind it and then a uh, nice drop underneath the uh the bridge across uh the way uh, it's very cool. I think there's there's a lot of good stuff in this one. Um, so this was uh, Steve and AJ and uh, Janae, and um, they did a very nice job on this one uh, through the whole thing. So let's uh, let's jump across to uh, the one that uh, competed against. So this is uh, the team Scream Queens, and this one is called Drowned. Uh, so right off the bat, a very, very different vibe to uh, The Good Death. Uh, we have a uh, a London post-global warming or some kind of event here where uh, we are underwater. So we got the London Eye here uh, having seen some better days. Um, right off the bat, a pretty cool vibe for sure. So you've got this, um, you know, all the buildings have submerged here, all these uh, kind of masses of landscaping. Uh, growing up out of the water, and then you can definitely get the hint that there's stuff going on underneath. Uh, so we can kind of start to go through all this. So um, lovely boat for one. I think that's very nicely done. The uh, RMS Bodie McBoatface, uh, because you know we got to, got to get the jokes in there. Um, coaster wise, we'll start here. So this is the Lifeboat Reserve Squadron, our uh, coaster uh, water coaster here. So a couple of different lift hills. And pretty nice layout here. The nice thing for things like this is that realism kind of sort of goes out the window when you're in this more fantastic world. So I guess the the idea is that this is, all of this was just sort of bodged together and um, put with scrap pieces and things like that. And I think you'll see a lot of that as you continue on through uh, through the map. Our second half, nice drop there. Very nice layout overall. Um, really loving these awnings, um, just the kind of stretched tensile structure type awnings across the whole thing. It definitely gets that whole vibe of the, we're building on top of the roof of these old buildings and this is all that we've got right now and this is what keeps, keeps kind of everything going. I kind of like the way that this fades off to nothing on the side. Um, I'll have more commentary on that as we go through other parks here, um, but it's uh, this one I think works pretty well. Here is a uh, the, the wrecking crew, uh, which is kind of neat. It's a fun ride coming down off of this uh, pretty nicely put together uh, crane that's sitting on top of this uh, very 
nicely ornate building. Um, you got a lot of these pretty cool, you can see underneath here, this very nice detailed um, mansard roofs and things like that. And then just on top, the shipping container, shipping crates. Not quite sure how the crane got up there, but I think that's a, uh, I'll leave that to creative license perhaps. A lot more stuff to look at over here. We get a nice um, boat ride here over on uh, this side. We have the Wobbly Bridge and uh, our second coaster, which is right here. Let's see uh, if we can get onto this one. So this is the Deliveroo, uh, which I love the subterranean dive here where you have the tunnel underneath. And then the way that this one's kind of supported across, a little bit funky, but kind of a cool design overall so we've got this launch layout and especially cool queue line here love this hanging between the different sections here of the building you can see inside the building being all kind of blown out and grown over uh, through here so the way this sort of hangs over using different styles of fencing throughout so it all feels very pieced together uh, overall which I think is super cool. Uh, kind of a really neat detail overall. This is cool, the swimming pool in uh, in the middle of the British Museum. And lots of cool details. You can kind of see underwater here also. There's some bits and pieces. Maybe not quite as detailed underwater as above, but I think that's probably fair. Um, you've got here a flooded shopping center. Up underneath we've got some monkeys up here playing around um, I do love this glass dome that's kind of been broken through by all the landscaping coming up I think that's very cool fry cook on the whole this is a very clever map and uh, this one did win uh, so this was the uh, the winner for the round one it was a pretty close battle back and forth, but ultimately uh, the Scream Queens were victorious, so good win to them. I think it was a certainly well-deserved win. Uh, I think our park was very strong also, but uh, this one definitely had some cool details and some just interesting stuff in the middle of it. Um, so lots of little details to look at. I certainly missed a number of them, but um, you've got uh, a little prison here in the middle with uh, you have Steve, who's our team captain, and uh, all sorts of just fun, fun little details. So highly recommend downloading all these parks and taking a look at them. Um, as we go through, we're going to um, come take a look at some more of these. So next up, we'll do round one, match two, and then we'll do round one, match three, and go through the rest of these. I'm trying to keep these videos relatively short um, as we just kind of do a cursory look at some of these bits and pieces. Um, so, but some may end up being a little longer than others. Um, but really a, you know, 15 minute video is not going to, uh, cover the amount of detail that are in some of these maps. Um, uh, head to head tends to bring out the best in, uh, the RCT community, I feel like, and really sort of ups the standard of design just in general, um, uh, and the content in maps, uh, it's a 60 by 60 or 3,600 tile uh, limit, so it doesn't have to be a square or a rectangle. It can be whatever shape it wants within that tile limit. So it's certainly not a whole lot of space. Um, and you'll see in some of these, they are crammed full. But there's a lot to see and I think a lot of really nice uh, detailing and clever ideas. And it's a really a good time to push boundaries, to see new rides, to see new scenery. Um, and I think, you know, every three years is about right for the community to be ready for this and really feel the the innovation that comes with things like this. And I think, you know, we've certainly seen flooded parks before, but there's a lot of cool ideas and cool details in here and just nice architecture in general. Uh, I know Robbie did a lot of, Robbie 92 did a lot of this architecture and uh, I think it was very nicely done overall. Um, but I will put a link to the download for both of these parks in the description. So definitely check them out and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and certainly if you have something to say for the builders, please go ahead and post it there on New Element as well. Uh, everybody always likes to see the comments uh, on all of these because they uh, certainly spend quite a bit of time, even though the deadlines are uh, 
quick and uh, and fast coming. I think this first one was about a month and a half after the contest started, so it was a fast moving project uh, for something at this detail level. Um, but you know that's part of what makes this interesting and makes it fun. But anyway, that is round one, and um, thank you all for those who have stuck around during my hiatus here. Uh, hopefully, the parts that we are generating are going to make up for that. Um, and for all the, the new subscribers here recently, welcome in. Um, I will have more regular content here coming very soon. So until next time, thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll catch you in our, for match one, uh, round one, match two, uh, coming up next. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.